So before we begin our session, we would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Squamish Nation, Tsleil-Waututh Nation, and Musqueam Nation. We recognize and respect them as nations in this territory, as well as their connection to the lands and waters around us since time immemorial. Thank you so much, Elham. Uh, I'm so happy to be here again. Um, we did one first workshop at the beginning of May, uh, and uh, yeah, this is the second second workshop here. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, on this quite sunny day. Uh, there was some sun. I hope you uh, had some time to, to catch uh, some of that sun today. Um, my name is Masha Rademakers uh, and I am a registered clinical counselor at uh, the North Shore CBT Center. Uh, and today I will be presenting on uh, learn how to manage your self-critical thoughts and boost your self-esteem. Now, before we start, I'd like to um, yeah, give a short introduction on uh, what I do at North Shore CBT Center. Um, so I have done a master's degree in counseling. I am a registered counselor now. Um, and um, yeah, I um, work in North Shore CBT Center, which is located on Marine Drive uh, and McGowan Avenue. Uh, so it's quite close to the Lionsgate Bridge, as you can see here on the map. Um, we're quite centrally located uh, and offer in-person and uh, online uh, counseling services. Um, so I am specialized uh, to provide uh, treatment for anxiety, OCD, um, and any other uh, anxiety-related concerns. Uh, I also treat depression, um, and um, issues of uh, self-confidence. Uh, and so, yeah, if you are interested, have a look at my profile on the website. Uh, this PowerPoint will be made available, and so you will find all that information uh, and, and all the links uh, in this PowerPoint as well. Now, before I start, um, I also would like to acknowledge the land. Um, I'm grateful to work, live and play on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, uh, specifically the Squamish, uh, Tsleil-Waututh and Musqueam nations. All right, so a little bit about the aim of this workshop. Why are we here today and what are we talking about? Well, how do we actually manage our self-critical thoughts? Uh, we all have them, right? It, it naturally pops up thoughts about ourselves, uh, thoughts about others, thoughts about the world. And so uh, the aim of this workshop is to change the relationship with your self-critical thoughts uh, by becoming more aware of your negative thinking patterns. Um, uh, you will learn some techniques that can help you boost your confidence. Uh, so I, I really try to give you some concrete, practical tips uh, uh, so that you can uh, take it into your own hands to take charge of these self-critical thoughts. Now, before we start going into, you know, the theory of it, um, I'd like to do a short grounding exercise with you. Um, you probably all had uh, a quite a busy day coming from work, um, um, being with your kids, um, doing your groceries, right? We already have um, have gone through half of our days. Uh, and so it's time to take a little breath here. Oh, okay, you're here, right? You're in front of your laptop. <laughs> you are here uh, with us. Um, and it is time to just kind of sit back and relax a little bit. Um, I'd like to invite you to put your two feet solidly on the ground um, and just kind of uh, lean back a little bit in your chair. Uh, feel, feel your sit bones on the chair, uh, maybe uh, lay your hands on your knees, right? And just start with taking a deep breath um, through your nose and out through your mouth. And let's do that again. So in through your nose, slowly, and then out through your mouth in your own rhythm. Now, when we are halfway our days, right, our, our thoughts might be busy, right? We might have a lot of thought traffic going around in our minds. So what I'd like to 
teach you is um, a grounding exercise uh, focused on the five senses. Now, the five senses, right? Uh, we have uh, smell, we have taste, we have touch, we have uh, our, our, our vision, uh, and we have hearing, right? Now, we're going to start with your vision. And I invite you to look around your room very slowly. Just look around and see all the different items around you. Um, and I invite you to uh, look at five things that you see around you and just mention them in your mind, okay? Like a green plant or a gray couch. And just take some time to look around you and to mention five things for yourself that you see around you. Okay, now you probably have seen five things now and I cannot see your faces, but I'm gonna guess. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go to four things that you touch. What do you touch today? Do you touch your clothes? Probably, right? You feel your skin feels your clothes. Um, your sit bones feel the chair. Right? Is there anything else you touch? Maybe you touch your own hands. Maybe you touch your glasses. Uh, maybe you touch the table. Okay, we're going to go to three things that you hear around you. Three things that you hear. Now I'm going to guess one thing is my voice. Well, what do you hear? I'm going to give you 10 seconds of silence here. And just mindfully note what you're hearing around you. Might be some traffic, might be some ticking of the clock. Okay, we're going to go to two things that you smell. Have you just cooked an amazing lunch for yourself? And are the scents still in your house? Do you have any spring flowers on your table? Hey, do you smell those? And then we're going to go to one thing that you smell, uh, taste, sorry. One thing that you taste. What do you taste? If there's any taste in your mouth. All right. Well, this is a grounding exercise that you can use to kind of just connect with your body, but also with your, with your room, with, with your environment, right? Because we tend to get stuck up in our mind um, and, and basically this is a way to get out of, of that stuck mode. When you, when you have a busy mind, uh, you can start looking around you and kind of slowing yourself down. Okay. Well, thanks for participating there with me. I will now dive into my next slide. Uh, what is cognitive behavioral therapy? So I am Doing, I'm using a modality in my work, which is called CBT. Um, now, uh, CBT is a structured, present-oriented therapy focused on modifying unhelpful thinking and behavior. So present-oriented means we look at what is going on in the here and now for you. Okay, How can we make the here and now better? So CBT doesn't like to focus too much on the past. Of course, we talk about influences from your childhood and, and things like that, but we don't linger there. We, we, you know, we put a spotlight on the here and now and really try to find uh, solutions for you. Um, now, the founder of CBT, um, he, he wrote, it's not the situations in our lives that cause distress, but rather our interpretations of those situations. Now, CBT says, well, everything starts with thinking, right? We interpret the world through our thoughts. And so our interpretations of the situations um, will um, influence how we see those situations and how we react to those situations. Um, so basically, our thoughts influence our behaviors, 
influence our feelings. And of course, also our body sensations are part of that mix. So you see them all here on the right side, thoughts, behaviors, feelings, and body sensations. They all appear together. Um, what CBD says, it mostly starts with your thoughts, um, how you interpret even a body symptom, right? If you um, hear your stomach growl and, and you think, oh no, I'm gonna get sick, right? That gives you a different um, behavioral action than if you think, oh, that's just my stomach, I'm hungry, right? So different interpretations give different behaviors and uh, can influence our feelings about that. Now, another example is uh, you see here somebody sitting in front of a laptop uh, at work and, and the thought could be, I am not qualified for this job. The feeling can be sad, defeated, embarrassed, and behavior can be quitting the job or avoiding presentations, stuff like that. Now, this person on the right has a different attitude. This person starts thinking, well, you know, I can learn and improve myself with practice, even though I'm maybe not perfect. Now, that new feeling of this person is empowered, interested, hopeful. Uh, and a new behavior is, okay, doing uh, his best. He's doing his best now and feels, um, you know, more accepted of, of himself more accepted. And so that is just an example of how uh, thoughts can influence our feelings, can influence our behaviors. Now, today, we're here to talk about self-criticism, right? Making harsh, negative evaluations of ourselves. Uh, and we all, we all do that. Um, and, and it can cause some feelings of doubt, inferiority, failure, guilt, uh, shame, um, which um, if there is a lot of self-criticism, uh, it could lead to anxiety or depression. Now, examples of self-criticism self are uh, body image uh, thoughts, like my nose is too big, or compared to others, I look ugly, or um, thoughts about competencies, Oh, I'm so dumb. I, I really uh, don't have that ability. I'm, you know, I'm not good at this uh, and I will never be, right? So those kind of thoughts all um, relate to the competencies. Then we have thoughts about likability. Uh, things like I'm not likable. Nobody will want to hang out with me, right? So these are kind of three kinds of, of self-criticism um, uh, thoughts. Now, when we go to the ne next slide here, what are the origins of self-critical thoughts? Um, it can be through childhood experiences, right? Uh, our parents, our caregivers, uh, telling us things, um, making certain comments. Uh, maybe uh, they are thinking from their own beliefs and kind of imposing their own belief system on you. Um, then there might be traumatic experiences that have influenced you and like bullying or dis discrimination, um, attachment injuries. Um, it can be some specific demands of our environments like uh, school, home, work and friendships. Um, you know, breakups have a, a big impact uh, on how we think about ourselves um, and uh, perhaps also you know, um, if we're really busy and we can't keep up with tasks and we start getting tired and that can also cause self-critical thoughts to happen. Then there's also self-imposed expectations. Some people are really perfectionists and want to do everything really well, right? And uh, so having very high expectations of yourself can then cause um cause you to not measure up to those expectations and, and, and you might become very self-critical in that situation. Now, our beliefs about ourselves, uh, they are definitely socially constructed, right? So we take messages from the outside world, from our parents, from our friends, from people that we, that we hang out with or spend time with at work. 
and we incorporate them into our framework of how we see ourselves, others, and the world. Now, these are, for example, ideas about beauty and appearance, how, how, what you should look like, uh, performance, um, gender, right? What, what is masculine, what masculinity or femininity, um, sexual orientation, um, fashion norms, um, or other societal ideas, um, right? There's, there's so many things that influence uh, us from, from uh, the outside. Um, so it's always important to ask yourself, where did I hear this message, right? Did I pick this up from social media? Uh, did I hear this during childhood? Um, and it can just be kind of an, an internalized message, but this message doesn't have to be true, right? And that's something that we're going to uh, kind of look at further um, in the rest of the presentation. Now, these internalized messages, together they form and they become our core beliefs. So we have certain beliefs about uh, ourselves, about others, and about the world, right? Um, now, some of these core beliefs are, are positive and helpful, uh, but others can be unhelpful and negative. Um, for example, um, core beliefs about being feeling helpless, right? I am weak. I am a loser. I am trapped in this situation, right? As if there's nothing you can do, right? And, and there is no belief in your own abilities to change something. Uh, so they fall under the category helpless. Then we have unlovable my core beliefs like, I am unlovable. I will probably end up alone. No one likes me, right? Um, and then um, we have worthless core beliefs, kind of um, thoughts like, I am bad. I don't deserve to live. I am worthless. I have no value in this world. Uh, and then we have core beliefs about external danger, not feeling safe. The world is dangerous. People can't be trusted. Nothing ever goes right. Um, and we see that, uh, right, the, the ones in regards to safety, um, they are often happening when somebody had an a attachment injury, like, um, like a rupture in a relationship uh, with a parent or with a caregiver, um, or they were in a dangerous situation or grew up um, and, and went through a traumatic event, right? So... Um, yeah, all these um, negative core beliefs, they can be internalized, but it doesn't mean that they have to uh, be there always. They can be changed. Okay, so we can and we have the, the possibility to change these core beliefs, um, but it would take some work because you would have to go dig deep and see, okay, where does this belief even come from, right? Uh, how am I influenced? Um, how am I um, self-imposing certain beliefs on myself, right? And how have other people influenced me in the process? Now, our beliefs also originate from our innate drive for connection and belonging. Everybody wants to belong, right? And that is kind of our survival instinct. Um, you know, um, Everybody needs to, needs to belong to a group for survival, right? And we all need love to thrive. And so um, the scientist uh, Maslow, um, he has created the hierarchy of needs. And as you can see here, um, it all starts um, in red with the physiological needs. So Maslow says we first need uh, the physiological needs air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction, right? The very kind of the basics um, of our existence. Now, whenever we have that, right, we are focusing on safety needs. We strive for personal security, employment, resources, health, uh, property. And whenever we have a roof above our head, uh, right, and we, we earn money, we can then focus on, on love and belonging as well, right? We, we need friendship, intimacy, family, and that sense of connection. And whenever that need is fulfilled, 
we we also focus on esteem, right? Esteem is important too. Uh, respect, self-esteem, um, status, uh, recognition, strength, and freedom. Um, and then uh, you can see the highest, uh, the top of the pyramid is focused on self-actualization, the desire to become the most that one can be. Um, so kind of the ultimate self-actualization uh, is possible, but only when you have all these other needs covered. Right? And then, and then there's the possibility uh, for further actualization of yourself and development of your skills. Um, and so, us having self-critical thoughts, right, comes forth out of our need for connection and belonging, and it's only natural. It can just become a little bit unhelpful, um, and that's where we can actually take charge and and uh, start helping ourselves to change that. Now, what are some consequences of negative core beliefs? Um, interpersonal problems is often what we see. Um, difficulty in trusting others, okay? uh, or feelings of inadequacy in, in, in relationships. Excessive jealousy, always comparing oneself with other people and never feeling like you measure up. Um, or being overly confrontational or aggressive. Right, um, because under that layer of anger, there's often shame or sadness, um, and so anger is a secondary emotion, and we often see that underlying it, there is a strong insecurity within the person, um, and also um, we see that um, when somebody puts others' needs above one's own needs, so being kind of a pleaser, always just. Uh, yeah, kind of um, prioritizing other people's needs, right? And totally not thinking about themselves. That's also uh, an interpersonal problem. Um, then we have mental health problems, right? Uh, as we talked about already, the depression, right? Uh, never feeling like you measure up. Anxiety, being afraid uh, of doing things. Uh, for example, social anxiety. Uh, substance abuse, right? Kind of an escape um, out of all the negative uh, self-critical thoughts um, and environmental stressors as well. Then difficulty handling stress and low self-esteem are also kind of consequences of negative or beliefs. Now, we talked already about the relationship between thoughts feelings, and behaviors, right? So we said, well, if we change our thoughts about ourselves, we can also create uh, and, and create change in, in our feelings um, and in our behaviors, right? So I'd like you to remember the relationship between thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, uh, because that is important for the next slide that we're going to talk about. Right, so we have this wheel of emotions, and we all do feel uh, those basic emotions, uh, and and there are so many words to express uh, emotions, right? Um, and so it's very important that whenever we either feel a strong emotion, that we ask ourselves, wait a second, what do I care about so much in this moment? So what does that mean about my underlying belief here? So whenever you look behind the emotion, right, and you just accept, okay, I have this emotion right now, um, and I'm going to look behind the emotion to see, hey, what is causing it? Then there's probably some thoughts that you find. You probably have some automatic thoughts shooting, shooting around, right? And, and uh, these thoughts, um, they show you what, what you actually believe in this in that moment about yourself about others about the world and so we go through the emotions to the thoughts and then whenever you have identified your core beliefs there um you you will also be able to um yeah to to kind of change that thought about yourself and to apply your realistic thinking skills and see if you can maybe 
work through that emotion. So when when people say, yeah, you just need to work through that emotion, uh, that is what they mean, right? You look kind of behind the emotion instead of right away reacting on a whim. Now, we either know that we are upset because we feel a strong emotion or we have certain thoughts uh, going through our mind, right? And so uh, either you see, you see your emotion or you see your thoughts. Um, and it's good to become aware of both of those uh, uh, things happening, right? Now, how do we become more aware of these thoughts and what they mean, right? You're gonna have to really pay attention to your thoughts, your feelings, and behaviors. Instead of right away reacting, you're gonna respond. So that means you take a break whenever an emotion comes up, right? And you and you take some distance from it and, and you think, okay, wait a second, which thoughts just came up? Um, and you're gonna become more aware of your automatic reactions and your self-perception. So what are the underlying feelings here? Are you feeling ashamed? Are you scared? Um, are you angry or sad? And then how did your past experiences shape your beliefs, right? So has there been a consistent message to you? And is that why you are believing this? Um, or maybe it's a self-imposed message. Are you um, yeah, expecting something from yourself that you don't measure up to? So this is how you start identifying these negative core beliefs. Now, often what I start with in therapy is saying, well, you know, our thoughts are not all true, right? You are not your thoughts. Thoughts are a product of the mind. They kind of fly around. You make associations, you see things in the world, uh, you have certain beliefs, right? And so everything is, is thrown in the mix and there you have a thought. So can we create some distance from it by saying, well, that is just a thought. So we label that a thought and we become an observer of our own thoughts, right? A thought is only one interpretation of many. Um, and so it's important to start practicing non-judgment and don't attach value to the thoughts right away. Of course, in some situations, um, when we base ourselves on, on evidence from the here and now, thoughts are true and important, right? I look at my, my lamp here on the table and I see it's on, right? My thought is, my light is on. That's a true thought based on evidence. Uh, from the here and now around me. Um, however, a thought like, oh, I might be, um, you know, I might be unlikable, right? Is not necessarily based on evidence from the world around me, right? And, and uh, it is something that is influenced by many factors, right? And we often tend to just narrow down on the negative in our own mind. And so, when we want to create some distance from that thought, um, we can kind of look at it from different perspectives and, and try to see, is this thought actually true? Now, it all starts with just labeling your thought as just a thought. So this is called thought diffusion or cognitive distancing. So it's a technique that you can kind of uh, teach yourself, it helps to shift your attention away uh, from the negative thought. So let's have a look on the right here. I found a really nice graphic, right? So this person is thinking, okay, I am a failure. Um, but then this person is thinking, I am having the thought that I'm a failure. So they become aware that it's, it is just a thought. And then they start becoming aware of, I am noticing that I am having the thought that I am a failure, right? So it's almost like inception, right? <laughs> they suddenly start 
becoming aware that, oh, wait a second, they can think and distance from the thought and they can think about that whole thinking process in itself. Um, so that is a technique that you can apply whenever you have a lot of non-relevant, self-critical thoughts going through your mind and you want to just um, kind of label them and then that's it. And then redirect yourself to your activity. So that's just a thought. Now I have a video here and I'm just going to share my sound. It's a very short video and uh, let's see if it's going to work. Um, it is about thanking the mind. So that's another way of distancing yourself from your thought. And this uh, is a very famous uh, psychologist. His name is Russ Harris and he has amazing videos on uh, how to distance yourself from your thoughts. Let's see if that is going to work out here. Oh, I don't see the start button here, so it might not work. Okay. Um, it seems not to work right now, but um, no worries. We will um, send the PowerPoint to you so you will kind of see that one minute video by yourself then. But basically what he does is, right, you have your self-critical mind and you see here this, this thought cloud next to him. Um, and this thought cloud, he, he himself is criticizing himself a lot, right? And he just looks at it and says, well, you know, thank you. Thank you for, for letting me know. Um, and, and then he looks away. So it's kind of thanking your mind for warning you about something, but it's not necessarily relevant, right? So you just say, hey, thank you. And, and you just go back to your activity. Um, and if you do that a lot, you just look at your, your own thought and you say, well, okay, that's a thought. That's just a thought. Thank you, mind. And, and you kind of redirect yourself. Um, it's it's uh, one way of uh, distancing yourself from that thought. Okay, so another way is um, taking a more strength-based approach to yourself. So we tend to put a spotlight on everything that is, that is negative because, right, we want to um, improve our performance. We want to be the best we can. Uh, we don't want to make mistakes. And so our spotlight is usually uh, focused and narrowed down on the things that we've done wrong. Um, but what about we kind of move that spotlight a little bit? And, and move it more towards the strengths and the qualities that you have. Can you make a list, you know, for yourself of, of your qualities and strengths and then put a spotlight on them? Every time your mind comes with that negative uh, voice, you just put the spotlight on the other story, the other narrative about yourself, um, right? And that's kind of how you cultivate what they call a growth mindset. Now, what is a growth mindset? Uh, on the left here in the picture, you see it in green. Uh, well, mistakes help me learn, right? Feedback is valuable. I improve with practice. I won't give up. And um, you basically want to make sure that you accept even your own mistakes because that's the only, only way that we can grow, right? Is accepting your mistakes. Um, and, and accepting that, yeah, we're not perfect, right? And, and that keeps you motivated to grow and keeps your mind flexible. And so we call that creating cognitive flexibility. Um, so you're open to learn, you're open to hear some feedback about yourself and about your performance, um, and, and you do accept yourself as uh, a mistake-making human, right? Um, so on the right, you can see people with a fixed mindset, right? And, and, and they get, get kind of stuck there um, into the thoughts of like, I want to avoid making mistakes. I need to avoid it. Um, I'll never be that smart. Or I know best, right? This is good enough. I don't have to change. I give up. So that, those thoughts are often uh, kind of uh, coming out of a fixed mindset. 
And whenever you have a fixed mindset, you, you kind of don't see the need for change. You don't want to change. Um, and it's going to hold you back uh, in the end, right? Because it causes also dissatisfaction, uh, dissatisfaction about yourself uh, and about others and about the And so um, all of this comes down to self-compassion, right? And it's very important to treat yourself as you would treat a friend, right? Embrace yourself with kindness and care. Why are we not as kind to ourselves as, as we are to others, right? Um, nobody is actually perfect even though it seems like that, right? When we look at others, we often think, oh, everything is better for that person. Um, but we don't see everything for that person, right? We, we don't see their struggles. So don't compare yourself with others. Get connected with people who love your authentic self. So surround yourself with people that confirm your self-worth. Um, it's, it's very important. And so... Another trick uh, for helping you, uh, you can start catching your automatic negative thoughts, right? So the, all those negative beliefs, like I'm not smart enough, I can't do it, etc. We call those kind of thoughts um, automatic negative thoughts or ants. So these are like little ants crawling through your through your head, um, and and they pop up, right? Now. You can ask yourself, is this thought actually true? Is this thought actually helpful? Now, if you said um, yes, and, and you said yes again, then you go to the next one. Is this thought inspiring? Maybe not, right? Is this thought necessary? Also, maybe not in this moment, right? Maybe you're doing a presentation. It's not necessarily inspiring, helpful, or necessary to think I'm not smart enough right now. Um, and then you can ask yourself, is this kind to myself? Probably not, because we tend to be so harsh to ourselves. So this is an acronym, THINK, and you can kind of easily refer to it. Whenever you're stuck in self-critical thinking, you can ask yourself these five questions and and probably at the end of it, you can conclude that this thought is probably not helpful. And so you can dismiss it. It's okay. You don't have to um, spend attention thinking about it. Now, another way is to reframe your thoughts, right? So you start with, I'm an unlikable person, for example, and I will never find a partner. Now, you can start with, okay, what is a more helpful thought? So changing the thought, changing the thought. Um, or can we look at what is another possibility? Is there another possibility? Is there anything to like about me, perhaps? Um, what would the people who care about me say? Um, and what is the worst that can, can really happen? And how would I cope with that? Probably I will survive. Right, even if if the worst case happens, right, and and if my friend had this thought, what would I tell them? Can I be hundred percent sure this is true? Probably not, because it's a thought, right? We are one sided thinkers, and so these are some of those questions that you can ask yourself to reframe your thoughts. So reframing your thoughts also uh, kind of involves changing your language. So if you are very kind of direct to yourself, like I'm, I'm going to fail, then maybe you can think something like, oh, this could be an opportunity to learn something, right? We, we look at the positive. What is the positive here? And even if I fail, I might learn something. Um, now, if you have the thought, I don't want to let anyone down, right? You could say, well, it's okay to put myself first and say no sometimes, right? Sometimes our own needs uh, come first uh, before we can take care of the needs of others. Um, I need to be in control can be a thought. And uh, you can change your language and say, well, 
I can cope even when I'm not in control. I can still keep on breathing. I don't always need to be in control because we can't control everything in life, right? You need to tolerate discomfort as well. And so the right side, right, when we have changed our language, is more like a growth mindset. Instead of on the left side, we are very catastrophic in our thinking, right? Now, it's also important to not ignore alternatives. There, there might be alternative explanations, right, for um, us not performing well or for a friend rejecting our, us or not wanting to meet up with us, right? So, for example, your friend just canceled a meeting with you um, and you feel rejected as if your friend doesn't like hanging out with you. Now, what could be an alternative explanation? For example, like my friend is probably not avoiding me on purpose, right? They could just be really busy. Uh, so instead of right away focusing on uh, the self-critical thoughts, right? We can we can focus on okay, what's actually going on for this friend, um, and and maybe it's more on them than on me, right? Now, of course, there are going to be moments in our life that we are going to be rejected on the basis of, you know, our personality or our, our performance, our skills, right? Um, however, still in the face of rejection, we can still keep on accepting ourselves and stay strong with ourselves. Um, so Stanford research have uh, shown, has shown that people who believe that their personality is fixed and unchangeable are more likely to carry rejection into the future. Okay, so if you think uh, that your, your personality uh, is a only a certain way and people have to just accept that personality, um, then when these people get rejected on the basis of that fixed personality, they tend to feel more hurt, right? Because they don't have that growth mindset. And so they get uh, uh, yeah, really upset with their own personality, basically, or, or deeply hurt. So it's very important to um accept your mistakes right but know that it is not always you and um, it can also be just like the alternative explanation uh, be part of the circumstance um, so spend time with people that make you see yourself worth. now on the right side you see some steps on how can you uh, deal with rejection right acknowledge your feelings about it don't put your emotions away right and talk about it with a friend or with a family member. Give yourself some time to grieve. You didn't get what you wanted, right? Uh, don't take the rejection as a reflection of you, right? You are still there with all your qualities, with all your strengths. Maybe it just didn't fit the other person or the situation, right? Uh, or maybe you made a mistake and that's okay too, right? So it's important to distract yourself at that moment, get your mind off the subject. Uh, don't take it personally because you still have all your strengths right there and be kind to yourself. And of course, learn from the experience. Uh, we can always improve ourselves and that is, again, creating that self-growth mindset. Now, there is this term called radical self-acceptance. And it kind of involves like embracing your true nature, freeing yourself from shame about yourself and loving the entirety of, of your human experience with the imperfections. Okay, So this comes from, from Buddhist uh, scriptures. And, and um, I found a very nice um, quote from Tara Brach. Uh, she has created this, uh, she has written a book about radical self-acceptance. And she says, radical self-acceptance takes courage. It is not ignoring or pushing away issues. It is about facing them head on, exploring them with gentle curiosity, taking the lessons and leaving what weighs us down. So embracing your true nature um, doesn't mean that you can just, you know, like, not stop learning and just accept yourself as you are, <laughs> uh, right? It's self learning is always uh, there, right? Self improvement is still important.
important. It's about facing uh, your mistakes and being able to see them instead of pushing them away. Now, uh, yeah, we've come at the end of my presentation and I'm just looking at the clock here. I think I have 10 minutes left. Uh, so we still have some time uh, for some questions. Um, so yeah, feel free to uh, type your questions in the Q&A and maybe Elham, maybe you see already some questions there. Uh, I'm just going to give people some time to do that. Um, yeah, if you want to use the chat feature, you're more than welcome to do that. The Q&A also will keep your questions anonymous. So that is another way you could submit your questions. Uh, and while we're giving people some time to do that, I do have a couple of questions for you, Masha. Um, one is how do you deal, so you've given us some techniques in terms of how to deal with some of those internal critical thoughts. Um, so while we're working on that part and trying to reframe our thoughts and use, change our language, how do, how do, what do you recommend in terms of dealing with situations where while you're working on that internal dialogue, you're also hearing it from the outside. So it could be family members who are still contributing to those uh, negative core beliefs. It could be, um, you know, coworkers who are, you know, sh uh, sharing that kind of negative sentiment, or it could be like working with customers who are, again, giving those uh, negative feedback. How do you recommend working on that internal dialogue while trying to deal with the outside as well? Yeah, that's such a good question because we mostly now focus on that internal dialogue. Yeah, um, but I um, I think it's first and foremost important to ask yourself, okay, what do you have control over in this moment, right? So whenever you have a lot of criticism coming at you from outside, what can I control? I, you can probably control your own reactions, right? You can control how you take that message from outside, right? Are we are we going to just right away internalize that and think that's me? Or are we going to, uh, you know, kind of create that that barrier almost, right, of, of self-acceptance and, and you know your strengths, right? And um, be open for feedback, of course, always. But at the same time, right, if there is a constant stream of, of criticism, uh, very important to... Uh, to to stay strong with yourself, right, and know what your values, what your what your goals are, um, and and what you stand for. So um, whenever we have situations like bullying, for example, right, it's that's extremely difficult to to deal with. Um, and ideally, we create um, kind of a, a situation where somebody can. Um, just shrug, shrug their shoulders about what uh, what the others are saying, right? But that's extremely difficult and takes a lot of self compassion uh, for the other person. Um, so, uh, whenever situations like that are happening, um, yeah, we work a lot on self compassion, on radical self acceptance, uh, but at the same time, uh, we try to see if we can change certain environmental factors and improve relationships. Uh -huh. Right, because it's it's not only about us and, and and our own heads. Sometimes we are really stuck in some very unhelpful situations. Yeah. Thank you so much for answering. Um, there is one question from our audience, um, and so the question is: What is your favorite distraction to put some space between your automatic negative thoughts? Oh, I like that question. Um, the favorite distraction? Well, you know, I, I don't like to run away from them. And I think it's very important that we don't push away our thoughts because they're going to come back to us. <laughs> um, and so uh, for me, it's really being a little bit sarcastic with myself. It's like, really? Am I really that negative about myself right now? Is that really needed? So it kind of comes down to, is this actually helpful right now? Why am I so self-critical in this moment? And that I actually, I can put all my energy in, in something way more productive, right, than, than thinking negatively about myself. Um, so I think that that would be my own personal uh, <laughs> distraction technique. Um, so I think I, I really like that acronym THINK. Is this true? Is this helpful? Is this inspiring? Is this necessary? Is this kind? Probably not. 
Um, I love that you you also add a sense of humor to to the situation too. It's like you know you know using that sarcasm to kind of make light of the situation as well. I really I, I think I might try that myself. Um, <laughs> Uh, one other question that I have is, you know, I've heard so much, so much good stuff about positive affirmations. And um, I don't know if everyone is aware of what that is, um, but I've heard some good things about it. Is there science behind that? You know, do you recommend using that as a technique as well? Yeah, it's kind of part of that self-growth mindset of like, you know, I, I am enough, all right, and, and I, I can do this. So there's definitely science behind it that self-affirmations can um, have a very positive effect on, on self-worth and self-esteem. Um, however, that in itself um, would not be able to change uh, high anxiety, for example. So I always would combine it with reframing of thoughts right changing your language looking at different alternative explanations uh, realistic thinking techniques so all of that together does really help yeah so as part of that self-growth mindset i i would definitely encourage people to do that yeah 